Great afternoon. How's everybody doing? Can anybody hear me? Yeah, got you. All right, all right. Rossi, how are you, sir? I guess nobody else can hear me, huh? <laughs> We can hear you, Kendall. Hey, come on, come on. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> now, uh, real quick before we get started, I'm trying to get my uh, ear pods untangled, as y'all can see. Uh, we're about to get started, but I just want to do some housekeeping. Um, good to see some familiar names. Eric Jones, good to see you, sir. Art Mitch. Terry, Terry. Terry Weems, how are you, miss? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. I always see your name on my LinkedIn. I appreciate you for uh, registering. Good, good. Um, Jen, as soon as I get this thing untangled, look at this. Y'all, look at this. <laughs> Don't say nothing, Jen. Don't even open your mouth. Don't even start. Don't Don't even start. <laughs> We, we got other people on the phone with us. <laughs> All right, here we go. We can get this locked in. All right. Um, do a little housekeeping before we get started. First of all, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa, uh, Holidays, all of that good stuff. Get this locked in. All right, can y'all still hear me good? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, appreciate everybody for uh, registering. Uh, let me just do some quick housekeeping. For those of you that are not familiar with how I do things or you know how I do my uh, online, uh, whether it's webinars, workshops, sessions, whatever that looks like, um, one of the reasons why this is not a webinar where I'm just going through a slide deck is because I believe in engagement and I believe in actual work. Um, even though my wife and some other people, and a few maybe on here, might say I run my mouth a lot. Um, I really, watch it, Jen. I really prefer to actually get some work done. So I'm not about the fluff. So if at all possible, I would love to see your face. I would love for you to get some paper and a pen and actually engage. I will be asking questions. We're going to do a back and forth. At the end of the day, when you hang up, I need for everyone to say, yo, that was really valuable. I engaged. I was able to take away some things that's going to help me go into 2024. So I, Art, I see you driving. If you can pull over, pull over. Um, there is no guarantee that you will get a recording of this. You know how some of y'all, we register for stuff and we register and we don't show up and expect somebody to send us a recording. I don't think I'm doing that. So don't expect the recording. Um, if you're here and you're engaged, uh, Tony might make me send one to y'all and Simone may, but um, I really don't like doing that because I think that we just get too comfortable with sitting and just listening. And you're not gonna remember half the stuff I say anyway. So this is not me doing a keynote. This ain't me doing a lot of talking. We're literally going to work. So get your pens out. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a personal audit. Get your pen, get your paper. I'm going to pull up a slide deck, take down the questions. You can write down the questions and I want you to write the answers. All right. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Any questions before we get started? Any comments before we get started? If so, drop it in the chat, just to make sure we got the chat feature working. Just everybody, just drop in the chat. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Just drop in the chat. Tony, I see you, okay. It's funny, I meant to drop the um, the uh, presentation in the WhatsApp group. Al, good to see you. Oliver, good to see you, sir. Um, I see some names. Dwayne, good to see you. I see some new names, some new faces, that's good. All right, yep, everybody ready to go? Rhonda, hope all is well. Good to see you. Marlon, good to see you, sir. Um, Marcus, my man. Where you at, Marcus? You overseas still? Yep. All right. All right. 
Let's get this thing popping. We have a lot to cover in a very short time. So, give me one second. Just slide deck up. Hey, Simone, I love the red. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Mom, how you feel? Y'all give it up for Simone. She's just coming back off vacation. Let's give it, give it hey, y'all. Happy <laughs> vacation, Simone. Great. Mine's being sick at the end. How you feeling? Yeah, yeah. You sound like you got a little, uh, keep all that to yourself. Keep all that to yourself. <laughs> I spread it with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Can everybody see my screen? Yes. All right. So yes. the first thing that I want to do is we're going to do a personal audit. Um, and I just want to get this started so that we can see where we are in four areas of our life. So now there will be four questions. You will rate yourself on a scale from one to five. One meaning, mm, no, nah, it, ain't, it ain't good at all. And five meaning I'm on point, I'm great. All right, here we go. Now you got to write your answers down separately. Make sure you write them down. Now, let me preface this. Do the audit and write down your answers and tally up your score separately because at the end, we are coming back to your personal audit score. So make sure that you write it down separately. If everybody is ready, just drop in the chat. Let's go. Let's go. Just drop in the chat. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good. Got you, Tony. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. All right. Great. Question number one. The first area is our physical, right? This is eating and exercise, health and fitness. First question is, how healthy and physically fit do I feel on a scale from one to five? How healthy and physically fit do I feel? One meaning, mm, I don't feel good at all. Five meaning, I feel great. And this is on average in this season of your life. Question number two is your energy levels. How energetic and vibrant do you feel on a daily basis? One to five. On a daily basis, how energetic and vibrant do you feel physically? Question number three, lifestyle choices. How healthy are your eating, sleeping, and exercise habits? How healthy or consistent are your eating, sleeping, and exercise habits? Me and sleep have been having a battle over the last two months, and I've been getting my tail toe up. I'm to my toe up, Jen. I ain't been winning at all. I ain't won a day. All right. If everybody has, you, you have these, you wrote them down, you've written your answers on a scale from one to five. If you have, if I'm going to keep moving. If you need me to go back, just jump in. You don't need to raise your hand. Just jump in because I can't see everybody. All right. That's physical. The next area is psychological. First part is mindset. How positive and growth oriented is your mindset? How positive and growth oriented is your mindset? One meaning it's low, five meaning very high and very positive. In the area of resilience, how well do you cope with stress and adversity? One, be, one being, I don't cope with it well at all. Five being, I murder it. I'm good. And you can put one, two, three, four, or five. Third area is in the area of problem solving. How effectively do you identify and solve problems? Identify and solve. Identify and solve. One out of five. All right. If you need me to go back, just say. Our next area is emotional. First part is self-awareness. How well do you understand your emotions and their impact? How well do you understand your emotions and your impact? Simone and Tony, I am logged into our group chat. So if you guys have Anything for me, just drop it in there. I'll be looking at that. Next part in there is your emotional regulation. How well do you manage and express your emotions? 
I learned something a few years ago that has been a game changer for me. And it was emotions are natural, they're normal, but they are to be managed and not always acted on. How well do we manage and express our emotions? Third part in this is empathy. How effectively do you perceive and relate to the emotions of others? How effectively do you perceive and relate to the emotions of others? One to five. Self-awareness, emotional regulation, and empathy. All right. If I'm about to move on. If you need me to go back, just jump out. Just say, go back, go back, coach, go back. The last part area is, I like to say soulful. Some of you may say spiritual. Um, I say soulful because it is around connectedness. So the first part in here is your inner peace. How frequently do you experience a sense of peace and contentment? I see you, Terry. <laughs> she had that face like five every day. I'm good. <laughs> All right. The next part is purpose and meaning. I want you to really think about this purpose and meaning. How clearly do you understand your life's purpose and meaning? Most of us don't even sit down and think about purpose we, because we every day trying to build, grow, and then um, service what we're building and grow. And then the last part in there is connection. How strong is your sense of connection to something bigger than yourself? How strong is your connection to something greater than yourself? One to five. All right. I'm going to do this so I can see everybody. I'm going to stop that real quick. Did everybody see the slide deck? Were you able to get the questions and were you able to answer? It? Just, just put in the chat. Got if you didn't get it, say I ain't get it. Can I ain't get it, Cody? Did everybody get it? Good. Good to see you, Levi. All right, listen. I want everybody to take the take some time, take a minute right now and add up your scores. In every area, add up your add up your score in each area and then add up all four. And when you're done, say I'm done. Drop it in the chat, say I'm done or you can or you can talk. I like to hear people talk. You know, I don't like all this just hear myself. So y'all feel free to talk to me if you want to. Again, for those of you that have just jumped on, if at all possible, um Put your video on, put your video on, unless you just, you know, don't do it, if, you know what I'm saying? Don't do it if you, yeah, don't do that. If you like Coach, at the head, getting your head done, go ahead. For those who just jumped on, how do we get the previous questions? Yeah, if, if you just jumped on and you have not seen the questions, please let me know. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Laura. Say something. If you haven't seen the questions, say something. I'll go through me. them real quick. Marcus, you've been on, what you I talking about? <laughs> I ain't, I ain't get them, Coach, okay? Okay, here we go. We're going back real quick because this is this is an important part. I'm going to do it again. For those of you that have added up your score, I would love it. One of you have one of two options. You can share it with me in the chat private, which your total score is, or just drop it in the group chat. You can share it with me private in the chat. Just do a private chat message just to me with your total score, or you can do it in the group chat. Either way is fine. All right, first area is your physical area. These are the three questions. If you need to, take a screenshot. I can't wait for everybody that was late. I'm about to move on, take a screenshot. This is the second area, which was psychological. The three parts is mindset, resilience, problem solving. Take a screenshot if you need to. Take a screenshot, psychological. The next part is emotional. These are the three questions around self-awareness, emotional regulation, empathy. Take a screenshot if you need to. And then the last area is soulful. Three questions, inner peace, 
purpose, meaning, you're welcome, and connection. All right. All right, real quick, I'm going to stop this, take a screenshot if you need to. Um, good. Thank you. Excellent. 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 Good. I'm seeing the scores come through. Excellent. Good. And the scores come through. Good. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Excellent. Thank you, Oliver. Great. All right. Now, take those scores and just put them to the side. We'll come back to them shortly. Take those scores and put them to the side. All right. Now, the purpose of the actual workshop is to take an opportunity for all of us to actually start thinking about the goals that we want to accomplish first quarter 2024. I'm going to tell you why I do quarter. Um, thinking about goals for the whole year sounds sweet and sounds good, but it is not realistic for you to stay focused 12 months on certain goals without breaking them down. And the way I like to look at it is I like to do a buildup. So first quarter, what do we want to accomplish that will take us over into greater accomplishments in the second quarter? So I want to take some time and we're going to answer four critical questions that will help us identify the top two or three goals that we want to accomplish in the first quarter. Now, this is key. Two to three goals total for the first quarter. Now, I know some of y'all will be like, well, coach, I'm trying to do five to 10 things. I'm just asking you to slow your fast self down and master accomplishing the three goals, the two to three goals. If you can master or hit two to three goals and accomplish two to three goals, then you can carry over great momentum and get the other two to three goals in the second quarter. Culminating in December of 2024, you should have a, a very um, achieved body of work, meaning the goals that you have set. Now, here's the other thing. And I'm gonna say this. The reason why we just did the personal audit is because what I found is I do much better when I'm better. That's the, that's a bar, write that down. I do much better when I'm better. Watch this. I was up till about, I was up till 2 a.m. last night. I probably didn't doze off till three. I woke back up at 4.35 and just was in and out. But when I get seven hours sleep, beast. I'm on the phone, Simone, what am I like when I get seven hours? I'm talking about my mind is clicking. I'm dropping gym. When I get seven hours sleep, that's when I drop those uh, those videos that go viral that I could just pop off because I'm, I'm on point. Not only that, when I get seven hours sleep and I'm mentally right, I'm going to hit the gym. I'm running. I'm getting my five miles in. And when I am at my best, my business, my relationships, um, Everything that is around me gets the best from me, which helps me achieve and get the results. I'm making more money. I'm accomplishing more of my business goals. Uh, the family is better. Everything is right. So the reason why I wanted to do the personal audit is so we can identify four key areas where we need to be our best to position us to hit the goals that we set. I'm a firm believer that you don't achieve goals only by saying what I need to do but you're going to achieve them by saying, and write this down, who do I need to be? Who do I need to be to hit these goals? As we go into these areas, these four critical questions, I want you to think about not just business or financial goals. I really want you to also think about core goals. Who do I need to be type goals? So that when fourth quarter of 2024 rolls around, you like a well-oiled machine meaning you are at your best, you are at your best. So the goals that you set, you're getting 80, 90 to 100% achieved. All right, here we go. Four critical questions. And we're going to walk through these together. First, setting goals, goal setting. Now, I'm, I'm sure 99% of everybody on this call has heard about SMART goals. And we've talked about SMART goals, but we don't actually practice SMART goals. 
So I just want to go through it real quick so that we are clear on how to actually set a goal. It needs to be smart. Smart. The first S in smart is specific. Your goal should be clear, specific, and you need to know exactly what you're working towards. You can't be vague. Like, you can't just be like, all right, I'm going to lose weight next month. All right, that ain't, that ain't a specific. You're just saying, I want to lose weight, right? Example, instead of get in shape, specify run a half a marathon. I, I took it another step. I'm running a half a marathon next month and not, not just run a half a marathon. I need to do it in two hours and 30 minutes. Goal. The M in that is measurable. You should be able to track your progress. This is the piece that a lot of us are challenged with literally tracking the progress of our goals on a consistent basis. An example is you say you want to lose 10 pounds is measurable, whereas eating healthier is less quantifiable. 10 pounds, I can measure that. I heard somebody say one time, if you can't measure it, it don't matter. That's a bar. If matter of fact, y'all give me credit for that because I said it differently than they did. If you can't measure it, it don't matter. Bad English and everything. That's Coach K. Give me, the, give me the quote. All right. The A in SMART is it needs to be achievable. I had somebody tell me last week, Coach, I want to hit that first million in the first quarter. And they ain't never hit 100,000 yet. Like, you tripping. You got to get to 50 grand, 100 grand, 250. Get to a half a million. Then start talking about a million. Make it achievable. Meaning it should be realistic. It should be attainable. You need it to be ambitious. So you're going to stretch yourself to do it. But like, here's the example. If you're new to running, <laughs> this is actually good, and you're aiming for a marathon and 90 days might not be realistic. So I ain't crazy. I scheduled this half a marathon like eight, not seven, eight months ago, knowing that I didn't really run last year like I was supposed to. I needed to get myself in shape. I'm boom, I'm jammed up right now. I can do 10 miles right now in an hour and a half. I'm good. All right. Everybody good on that? Just drop in the chat. I'm with you. Moving on. The R in SMART is relevant. Ensure that your goals are relevant to your values and long-term objectives. Here's an example. If it's career advancement is your priority, a relevant goal might be to complete a professional certification. The T in it is time back. Like you got to have that, I want to do X in, at, on, in, in this time frame. I'm trying to increase sales 20% by the end of the quarter. Smart. Now, I know we've all heard this, but it is critical when we start setting these goals. All right, here we go. The four critical questions. Um, this These questions are around three areas. They're designed to give us clarity so we can get clear, and somebody write this in the chat, get clear on my dominant focus. Dominant focus, put that in all caps for yourself. You need to get clear on your dominant focus. That's, that's the area number one. Second area is creating a strategy slash plan and prioritizing what you're gonna focus on. And then that third area is now taking action, that system for execution, that plan. Three step, three areas, clarity, strategy, and action. Here's the four questions. Here we go. And I'm gonna need y'all to write these down. And as we say them, I literally want you to start writing your goals. So write your questions down, four critical questions. The first question, what do I want? So our focus is January, February, and March. I want you to pick two to three goals, max three. Two to three goals that you want to accomplish over the next 90 days. Here's an example. In the next 90 days, I want to dot, dot, dot. This is where we're going to take a, take a minute. In the next 90 days, I'd love to hear if somebody, if you already have your goal set, um, just come off mute and share. Feel, feel free to share. Two to three goals. What do you want to do over the next 90 days? 
Hey, coach. Want to uh, get in six, six, six uh, therapy sessions and also begin training for my half that is coming in March. Good. Those two. You have any? You have another one? Last one? Three? Next 90 days. Uh, I don't have a third one right, right, right at this, right off hand, coach. No. Let me tell you guys what I recommend. If you are a solopreneur, entrepreneur, hell, even if you're in the work environment, Make one of your goals, at least one, professional, meaning your career, or financial, whether saving. Like, I got a hard, strong goal to save X amount, save X amount of dollars every quarter that by the end of the year we have saved. There's a financial goal. You want to do personal, professional. So two to three goals, one of them at the very least, make it financial or professional. Anybody else? You can write it in the chat too. Anybody else? Can Two you to hear three me? Goals. I absolutely can. Okay, so I have my Yolanda? three goals. Yes, it is. Um, so in the okay. next 90 days, I want to bring, I want my business to be an LLC. Um, the second one is lose 15 pounds. And the third one is to save $3,000. All right, so watch this. You said in 30 days be a LLC? Yes, sir. Okay. I would say put a date on that. What what is 30 days? Give me a date. By January, boom. LLC. Okay. January 31st. Good. And you said um save how much? Three thousand dollars in 90 days. So by what? Give me a date. March what? April. By April 1st. March 31st. Okay, March 31st. You can keep it within that 90-day cycle, March 31st. Now, you may need okay. to break that down into smaller weekly or bi-weekly so that as, depending on how your money comes in, you put away X amount of dollars. Okay. And you said 15 pounds? Yes, sir. By when? In 30 days. Give me, so, I need a date. January January good. 31st. Good, good. January 31st. Excellent. Who else we got? That's good. That's a great start. That's good. Thank you. Now, listen, y'all might think this is simple because I know some of us on here, we're doing seven, seven figures, seven and a half figures, and I get all that. But watch this. You got to start thinking about, let me just keep it simple. I'm trying to do this personally because, look, I personally know and work with people that's making seven, eight figures. And they they physically are not where they wanna be. Their relationships aren't where they wanna be. Their house is a mess. And y'all know people like that too. I ain't the only one. So we need to focus on what's important. Who else we got? Two, three goals, jump in. Is that my family I see, Deborah and G? Let's go. What's up, Dad? I got you, Coach. Go ahead, Marlon. All right, so <clears throat> I got uh, create an ebook uh, that's centered around lead generation, um, spend more time with God and family, oh, 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 and uh, oh, oh, oh. create a create an ebook by when? <laughs> um, by January thirty first. Good. Next. Um, spend more time with God and family. What does that mean? That means starting my day off with God um, and being more present and spending that one-on-one -on -one time with my children and uh, my wife. Now, this is very good, y'all. We're going to walk through this, Marlon. We're going to walk through this. I need you to give me a picture what spending time with God looks like. Now, that could be prayer time. And that's fine. How much time are you going to spend with the Lord? Got you. So, um Prayer time uh, will be about 30 minutes and then actually reading my word for an hour. So an hour and a half in the morning. Good. From what time to what time in the morning? Uh, I would say from 5 o'clock in the morning to 6.30. Is that Monday through Friday or Monday through Sunday? Monday through Friday. And is that realistic every day, Monday through Friday at 5 a.m.? Or some days do you sleep in a little bit? I sleep in a little bit. Yes, sir. So what days? Like 
I, this is how, and how watch, this is good. So if I say, oh my, now, I'm sorry, let me, let me back up a second. I'm, I'm about to get excited. Hold on. There's a tool that everybody needs to get and use today. It's called, so, all right, somebody write this down. This is, this is a secret. It's called a calendar. It's, it's an amazing tool. Shh. It's a calendar. Now watch this. Watch this, Damien. Watch this. I ain't talking about the book. I need you to use the calendar in your phone. Nah, coach, I got books and all this. I got like six book notebooks with the cat. Mm -mm, no, no, no. Because if you late and you leave out the house and you 30 minutes late for something, you ain't going back for that calendar, but you for sure going back for this phone. Start using your calendar. So Marlon, your calendar should say Monday, 5 a.m., meet with the Lord from 5 a.m. to 5.30. And where am I going to do it? Now, for some of us, you even got to know, I'm going to go do it here. So I have on my calendar, 6.30 a.m., I think it is, meditate. I literally have had to, I got one area in my closet. I close the door, I meditate in the closet at 6.30. But, and then in the afternoon, because some days I'm not at the crib in the afternoon. I'm sorry, let me, let me be professional, Jen. I'm not at the house in the afternoon. So some days I have to say, where am I going to meditate? You can't set yourself up for failure is what I'm saying. So Marlon, you going you, you and the Lord are going to talk at 5 a.m. on what days? I put uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Good. What time? 5 a.m. to 5.30? Yes. Good. And then from 5.35 to 6.35, you in the word? Yes. Now, I would challenge you to every, as you're setting up your calendar, when you say read the word, you might want to tell yourself which word you're going to be reading on which day. Gotcha. A lot of times we'll set ourselves up for failure like me. I, uh, I must, I'll say, I'm going to get up in the morning and go to the gym, but I ain't got the clothes laid out. So I done tricked off time trying to find what I'm going to wear in the dirty clothes. Don't y'all stop because I know some of y'all going to dirty clothes. Come on, Jen, not, stop, Jen, now. We know some of us go into dirty clothes and get, all right. But if you set your clothes out the night before, which I have found to be a game changer, it makes it easier for me not to lie to myself. Look, watch this. I said yesterday, I, my daughter got me a new golf club. I said, I'm gonna go out. Now I know good, I bag, I pack my gym bag to go get my miles in. I said, I'm gonna go get this golf club. Then I'm gonna go to the gym right next to the golf store. And I messed around, got it, got to the golf store, picked up my golf club, left, went to get a smoothie, went right by the Planet Fitness, and then my plans changed. And I said, well, you know what? I got to go back to the golf store and get these other clubs that I wanted. And then I'm going to leave there. And then I'm going to go down because I want to start swinging with the new. I set myself up for failure. Somebody tell me what time did I get to the gym or did I make it to the gym yesterday? You didn't make it. I you didn't make, make it. Now watch this, that's what I did. I left the bag in the car and I said, you know what? Tomorrow, after I do my workshop, I'm going to the gym. So here's what I did. I got my gym stuff on that I'm going to wear to the gym. As soon as I hang this call up, I'm going, after I talk to probably Simone and Tony, I'm going directly to the gym. I'm saying all this to say, don't set yourself up for failure. Make sure that you prepare yourself to be successful. All right. Uh, you said, okay, so you said get in the word. What were your other, the last one you had, Marlon? The last one I had is um, lose five to 10 pounds. Good. We just need a win by win. By January 31st. Good. Does everybody see the concept that we have? Terry, you had your hand. Absolutely. Well, I I like the calendar. I, I've had it on my calendar, my phone for about the last two years. And even if I sleep in, I adjust accordingly. That is the first thing that I do is my meditation and my Bible study. And if I happen to sleep in, because I'm retired, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not going anywhere, I have no other appointments, then as soon as I awaken, that's what I do. And in regards to sleep, if I don't get seven to nine hours, and the way I accomplish that is nobody calls my house unless it's an emergency, because at eight o'clock every night, 
all devices go off. And I prepare myself in meditation to go to sleep. So it's all about scheduling and knowing what your body needs. If yeah. I don't get sleep, <laughs> you can We're forget it. Yeah, I love it. All right, y'all ready to go to question number two? Does everybody have two to three goals? Are they are they smart? Make sure they're smart. Make sure they're smart. And then write a note for yourself. Don't set myself up for failure. You know, doggone well, if you just tell yourself in your head that you're going to do X, Y, and Z every morning, something's going to happen. You ain't going to go to bed the night before. All right, let's move on to the next question. Oh, this, this is good. I'm making good times now. All right, next question. What do you have to do to make it happen? So in order for you to lose 15 pounds, in order for you to um, schedule that time in meditation and prayer and reading the word, in order for you to save X amount of dollars, what, what daily action, specific action do you have to take or write in your calendar on a consistent basis? So look at your goal, uh, want to lose X amount of pounds, want to save X amount of dollars. And I want you to write the top three activities or actions that you need to take in order to help you get to the goal. Um, one of them may be, um, if you try and not to eat sweets for 30 days, don't go to the grocery store. Don't, don't go down the aisle with the cakes and the pies. Uh, if you're trying to lose weight, maybe you, instead of, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer of subtraction by addition. Drink a, drink a smoothie a day and more water a day, and then maybe you won't be hungry. What are the actual action steps that you have to do in order to achieve those goals? What do you need to do? All right. Frameworks. Frameworks. Be specific. All right. Just give me a couple of people y'all share. What do you need to do in order? Give me some new folk too. What do you need to do to, to uh what action do you need to take? Real hey, action. Coach K. Go ahead. Yeah, this flow. Um, so um what I wanted to do was um I wanted to create um, speaking to a small group of men, losing 15 pounds by February and a new career with a different police department. So what I need to do is um, I need to maximize my 15 miles per week. Um, um, so give me, the I first, need, give, me, look, give me the first goal first. So if you said speak to a group of men, let's say that first. What action, yeah. what, what two to three actions do you need to begin to take to position yourself to speak to this group of men now? Let's remember, I need a date on when you want to speak to them by. I, yeah, I would want you to even get so granular and say how many men. Then mm -hmm. I want you to say where they at. Because if you know okay. where they're at, then you can position yourself to say, let me go there. But I want now I want to know what actions do you need to take to speak to this group of men? Go ahead. Okay, the action I need to take to speak to the group of men is... um recruit and identify the, the, the youth that's in my current school. The location is my school because I'm a resource officer at the school. So yep. I need to identify my uh, my my youth of men that are open to mentoring and um that want to be career driven. And then um create a date with my staff, uh my other um peers in the school to get it started as far as speaking with the young men. Excellent. Love it. Love it. And you even gonna go more granular, right? You're gonna go yeah. more even Forward, right um yes good anything else Flo? um I, I i i need to run i want to lose 15 pounds by february 2nd so i need to i need to run 15 miles per week where do you run currently yeah i was i was pa a past track track star in college and stuff so no, i know no 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 you was a track Sorry. star how old are you now Flo? <laughs> no i'm 33 but i, I run currently I, I run currently now but i'm not running 15 miles per week uh, bro, I was about to be that. like, you're 33, you ain't been in high school for 20 years. Stop playing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need to run 15 miles per week if I want to make that goal. So I, how many miles to... can you currently run per week? Um, far as I was with, you know, like, you know, life in the way, work schedule, 
you know, it kind of downsized it to where I'm like around like the five, six miles mark. So I have to create so, some more time. And um But you, you can know, run fifteen though in a week. Yeah, I, I could probably run more. Just outside of, I have to kind of you know, I may have to run four miles on a Saturday morning, which I'm off, and then on a work day, I probably could just squeeze in probably two or one miles. Okay. Y'all write this down for yourselves and in the chat. Remember we said the first area is clarity. We talked about clarity, strategy, and action. Yeah. The definition of clarity, my definition, is to simply decide and make a decision. So for example, Flo, you say, I want to run 15 miles. I'm going to do three miles, four days a week. And then I'm going to do... I'm going to do three miles in five days out the week. That's my 15. Just make that decision. Yeah. Because a lot of times we get stuck in trying to figure things out and you never really figure it out until you decide to just work it out. So write in all caps, make a decision and then make it work. Yes, sir. You got this, bro. All right. Anybody else real quick? What action do you need to take? Actions, real actions. Well, once, going twice. I go, coach. Okay, go ahead. Right. I go. So for for me, I got my first one is lose twenty pounds by February the first. Okay, good. So with so, so my actually is meal meal prepping and at least thirty to forty five minutes a day exercise. Mm -hmm. Good. So I would even go down even lower. The action is on, and I'm just saying this on Sunday, meal prep. Mm -hmm. for next five days now you know what's not okay. what hasn't been realistic for me i would be like i right, babe every sunday we're gonna meal prep for the next seven days and i'm trying to play golf on sunday i'm gonna be honest with you i ain't really trying to do no meal prepping in that it sound good you know how it sound good when it come out your mouth but when it's actually yeah. time to do it you ain't really commit so again don't set yourself up if you're gonna meal prep be realistic i don't do the meal mm -hmm. prep what i do is say this is what I'm going to eat on Monday. And I'm intermittent fasting now, so I don't eat until 1 o'clock p.m. So I, I, every day, five days a week, my first meal is a smoothie, period. Mm -hmm. So I already know that. So I get mm -hmm. clear on the meals that I'm going to have. So just make sure that you have specific actions and not short, short actions, short, like everyday type action, not necessarily... Um, a week, if that makes sense. All right. Go ahead, Marcus. I got, um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Marcus. Go ahead, Art. I'm sorry. Oh, I got a mother with um, two gigs a month at 25 to 5K by March 31st. Define two gigs. So uh, define um, two, uh, two, <laughs> two straight gigs in, in the school, in schools, and middle school and high school, any kind of schools, and then... Um, Okay. Well, wait, what does the action look like for you to get to your month? Sending out, doing, doing two campaigns a week with Yes Wear, sending out different uh, school. So the first part of that action is creating a list. That's the first mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. So I would get a list of 50 schools. Right. Start. If you get a list of 50 and then you create your campaigns, out of that 50, you should be able to close two. Mm. However, they may not be for 2,500. Yeah, I know. I know, Simone. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry, yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, in right. the interest of time, I just got a text about time. Simone just hit me. Go ahead, Marcus. All I'm right. sorry. We'll get back. Yeah. Are we going to discuss accountability and follow up now or later? Slow down, Marcus. Slow down. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I got you, bro. All right. Ready? We got to move on. We got to go. We got to go. I'm sorry. We got to go. Marcus just told me, hurry up, coach. All right. Second one was, what do I have to do? The third question is, what could get in the way? This is the anticipation. What are some of the roadblocks and challenges that could get in my way? Write them down. Top two things that can get in the way. Obstacles. It could be your, your work schedule. It could be um, social eating. It could be social media. What are some of the top things that could get in the way of you taking actions to achieve that goal? What could get in the way? 
Critical question number three. Critical question number three, what could get in the way? Take a minute and write one or two things down. I'm gonna keep this moving. And then question number four, Marcus, how will I hold myself accountable? This is a part of the measurement process. How are you going to hold yourself accountable? For some of us, it's different. Um, I would love to hear, this one I'd love to hear from everybody, how you're gonna hold yourself accountable to the goals, the actions, and overcoming the obstacles. Now, it's a two-part. How and who? How and who? I'll share with y'all my secret for accountability. Most of y'all have seen me put on social media that I'm running this half marathon next month for the last X amount of months. That's accountability because I don't put it out there. You hear me back in the day, I would talk about I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't chase women or men. That's accountability. If you see me with a red cup, you should be like, mm, what's going on? Yeah, Jen, stop. If you, if you see me with a red cup, that's accountability. You'll hear me say in my videos that I put out into the social media world, the goals, the object, like one of the goals that I'm about to put out in the public is literally to make up my bed every day because I don't believe in making up beds, but my wife likes it, so I'm going to have to do it. Accountability for me is putting it out in the public and then sharing it transparently in the public. That works for me. How are you gonna hold yourself accountable? Real quick, a few people. How are you gonna hold yourself accountable? And who is gonna keep you tight? Just, just jump off. I hey, have a, oh, oh, me. Let Terry <laughs> and then me. I have a, a, a reliable accountability partner. Excellent. In my walking and also in my writing. I've just uh, published my book. So she exactly. keeps me on point. We call it uh, a WAG session. And she's my writing accountability uh, person in that group. And so she makes sure that I set goals. If I don't accomplish them, for instance, if I say I'm going to write today 200 words and I only do 185, she actually charts it as, no, you did not reach your goal. Excellent. And then she asks you why you didn't reach it. So, you know, that works for me. Excellent. And she's also my walking partner. So we do a lot of conversing, walking. So she knows all about me. <laughs> Y'all saw Terry do her shoulders like she was walking. Let's go. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Levi, what you got? Did we lose Levi? All right. Who else? Who or how or who will hold you accountable to what it is that you said you were going to do? Go ahead, Marcus. <laughs> Since you asked about it. <laughs> so what I've been doing is I have a, a time on my calendar where I plan out the next day, but I have not been accountable to doing that every night. So when the day comes, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. There's there's a couple of things you mentioned that when you said it, it stung because if I do it, it works for me. If I compete against somebody else and have them challenge me, not just you better do it, like challenge, I do it. If I go public about it and say it on social media or somebody else, I, I, I'll do it. So I got to be more transparent about what I'm doing and not live in a silo. I love that. That's boom. Not not live in the silo, and that that com for all of us that have that competitive, or some of us may say petty competitive spirit, you got to use that. Jen and I have it. You have to use that to help you accomplish the things that you need. Like I'm 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 looking to get great at golf, so I play twice a week. But I talk junk to cats that I know are better than me, and I get on the course with them, and I just beat one of them last week took him right out the game and I, I ain't let him I'm like all over him now I met a new guy the other day I'm on the phone with him he's like yeah let's play whatever but I hear he's sweet with them clubs I'm coming for his head that is going to keep my golf game sharp and the sharper my golf game gets it holds me accountable to the goals that I have set for myself in golf go ahead Marcus so one more thing also I get feedback I heard yesterday that somebody said my performance was subpar I said what sub what 
Oh no. So this whole entire day I was locked in and I executed yeah. at a high level just because they said that I was doing something not so good. Yeah. But that wasn't your girl said you were subpar with. No, I'm just playing. Go ahead. All right, what you got? <laughs> All right, what you got? This for me, coach. Oh, Yolanda. Um, so hey, so for me, I have a life coach who does not mind holding me accountable. Um, and she will ask me specific questions, like, you know, let me like with the um financial goal, she'll ask me, you know, and, and we're friends too. So she'll ask me, Can I see it? Um, and I'll let her see it. So with the weight loss, um for sure. It's my husband holding me accountable. And one of the things I wanted to say was um, one of the things that gets in my way is when I create a schedule, and let's say I have one client in the 8 to 10 schedule, then if they call me at 12 or 1 or 2, I'll take that call. But I have to stick to that schedule. You're from 8 to 10. So you're going to leave the message, and I'll get back to you on the next day. Um, and so that's how I'm holding myself accountable, making sure I create that schedule and sticking to that schedule. Yeah, somebody write this down. Everybody write this down. Somebody put it in the chat. Um, this is for each of us individually. You have to respect your time. If you respect your time, it will force other people to respect your time. Like, I have to respect everybody's time on this on this workshop and keep it within a certain time frame. Um, here's another thing to write for yourself. In order, you always have to have a, a yes, meaning your calendar are the things that you have said yes to. Your yes allows you to say no to other people. So now if you're looking at your calendar, Yolanda, and you have a yes on it between these times, when other people are trying to get you during your yes time, that's your opportunity to say no. So have, have your yes time. All right. All right, we gotta, we gotta keep we gotta keep this moving. So right now, you should have the goal, you should have the actions, you should know what your obstacle what obstacles, and now you should have an idea on how you're gonna hold yourself accountable. That literally is gonna be a personal thing. Some of y'all need to find somebody that's gonna cuss you out, like just straight up, what the F is you doing? You punk, so forth. Like that's just that's how I roll. That's how Jen like to roll. Um, that's how a few of y'all like to roll, get cussed out. Some of y'all need to develop some competitive strategy with yourself. Some of y'all need to compete um, in certain things. Some of y'all need somebody that can just be nice. And you may need somebody like Terry got, you know, where they just kind of hold you, but you have to find out what works for you. All right. You need a pusher, a puller, a preparer, and a promoter in your life. Pusher, puller, preparer, and promoter. All right, now watch. I want you to go back to your personal audit. And I want you to look at the goals, the actions, the activities, the obstacles, and how you'll hold yourself accountable and not say to yourself so much anymore, what do I need to do? We have that written down or you'll have that written down. Now you got to ask yourself, who do I need to be in order to accomplish these goals? If your score was low, and I, um, once you do the math, if it's at that 50 average mark or slightly above, or in certain areas, your numbers were low, make sure that you focus on getting your physical energy right. Like I know I got to sleep in order for me to accomplish my goals. I got to get my seven, period. I know that I need to exercise because I need the physical energy. I know that I have to manage my emotions because emotions aren't just, oh, I don't feel like doing it. Emotions can be, I'm emotionally caught up with something else, which is keeping me from what I said I was going to do. Emotions can be your relationships that you're in. And I ain't talking about partnerships. I'm talking about your situationships, relationships with weed, smoking, drinking, shopping. Those are emotional relationships. The jump, the jump off the side. I'm sorry. Those are, who do you need to be to accomplish what you need to do? Some of y'all need to stop. You need to get the hell off social. I appreciate everybody being on enough to be here, but you need to manage and monitor your social media time because you trick it off. Kendall, can I say something on that? Go ahead, Jen. 
Um, I think especially when it talks about like emotional regulation and social media, really paying attention to are you using social media as your method of emotional regulation because you don't know how to manage your emotions without it being involved with someone else. Because wait, many times wait, wait. I need them to catch that. That was good. That's a bar. Hold on. Catch that. Don't steal my shit, Kendall. Don't yeah, I already got it. Simone is writing it right now. Say it again, Jen. Some of you all don't know how to manage your emotions, so you use social man you use social media as your method of emotional regulation. So if you're feeling like you don't know the whole emotional wheel, so if you're feeling upset, you don't know how to manage it yourself. So you go on social media and you blast people, right? Like so you don't know how like to sit with an emotion and feel it. You just know how to say, I'm feeling this thing. I don't have words to it. So I'm going to use social media or even worse, you're going to use people as your method of emotional regulation. So it might not be the side piece or the jump off. It might be how you use your executive assistant. It might be how you use your kids. It might be how you use the retail assistant because you don't know how to manage those emotions. So you only know how to use it, use other people when managing it. And here's a, here's a, a sidebar, uh, Simone, I hope you got all that. Oh, I got the recording work. Here's the sidebar. Your em emotional regulator is very important in helping you to accomplish the goals that you say you want to accomplish. Critical. I didn't realize that until recently. Critical. Now, I need you to think about who do I need to be? And I want you to look at those four areas, physical, psych psychological, emotional, and soulful. In those four areas or other areas that you have identified, who do you need to be? Like, what do those numbers need to look like? A lot of times we'll create goals and they sound sweet, but you're not physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically ready to achieve the goals. You don't have the energy or the stamina. And so before you try to go lift 300 or go run 20 miles, build up the stamina to put yourself in a position to do it. Who do I need to be is more important and more powerful than what do I need to do? Any questions before I jump, before I go? We're almost there. All right. Now, we got the goals. We got all that set. Now, this is where you have to really go on the offensive and you got to start attacking and you need to make sure that you have that, that accountability measure, whether it's a who or a how or a what, you got to make sure that that accountability piece is helping you stay focused and offensive on attacking the goals. Write this down. High value activity is you using the, your time focused on who you need to be and accomplishing your goals. Low value activity is the time that you doing trick off stuff, doing other stuff that has nothing to do with what you said you wanted to do. When you create these goals, lock in. Lock in. You have to start to create these habits. Oh, I didn't put the habits in here. All right, I'm done. Um, real quick, two opportunities to work with me in 2024. Real quick. I'm going to put it up on the screen. Take the website down. We ain't doing no sales pitch on here. Take the website down. First thing I'm doing is starting in January, I'm doing a 90-day accelerator, and it's the 90dayaccelerator.com. It's January, February, March, small group, no more than 10 people. I've already got three locked in. No more than 10 people, one group coaching accountability, and then one a one-on-one -on -one every month to, to help you develop the goals, the accountability that you need, and stay focused on hitting your targets and achieving your goals. The 90dayaccelerator.com. The next week, the next program is a, is a modified new version of the circle. This is a group coaching program, um, coaching, connections, community, where we'll focus on one year, hitting goals, targets, objectives in the nine life domains, mental, physical, relational, professional, financial, soulful, charitable and recreational and emotional, I think is, is, is the ninth one. Take down the link and check it out. Everybody got that? All right, so I'm coming off here. 
It's the 90dayaccelerator.com, jointhegcircle.com. Now, you got, you got your four critical questions. Inside of those four critical questions, you have clarity. You need to get clarity if you're not clear. Develop your plan of action. Make sure that you create a list of who, what will get in the way. What are the obstacles? And then how am I going to hold myself accountable? Let's do something different. And I don't know how many of us set goals and actually get the goals that we set on a consistent basis. Typically, life happens and we get thrown off, which is normal. That's natural. The question is, can you stay consistent over a certain period of time and attack? When life happens, do you emotionally check out or do you attack? Any questions and did you guys get some value? Any questions and did you get value? Questions and did you get value? Line is open. Going once. If you have a question, drop it in the chat. Can we say it? Oh yeah, just go ahead, say it. We got open. it, got it. So according to the four areas, we personally might want to go and attack one area, but are you recommending we attack the area that's the weakest? Absolutely. That, that only makes sense. The area that I am the weakest, I need to develop some strength. And watch this. Let's say in a certain area, you're at a two and your objective is to at least get to a four. Focus on going from two to three rather than from two to four. Incremental growth over a specific period of time. This is, this is oven work, not uh, microwave work. All right, do me a favor, in the chat, just write down if you've got value. Just write the word value if you got some value from this. Um, also, if you have any questions about the 90 Day Accelerator, that's probably gonna be my, my the, the best program or um, even the G circle, you have the links. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Tony, Tony at grindation.com. Good, thank you, Jasmine. Excellent, excellent. Now, do y'all want me to send y'all the recording? If you want, if you want the recording in the chat, put send me the recording. I see you, Damon, all right. <laughs> I see you. Good, excellent, excellent. Excellent. All right. Last call for questions. Questions. Y'all know where I'm about to go. Where am I about to go? To the golf course. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get these miles. I'm going to get these miles. No, no, no. I'm going to the gym. I'm, not, I'm going to golf. I'm golfing Sorry, tomorrow. Okay. I'm golfing okay. tomorrow at the clock. Golf is tomorrow at 11. Excellent. Yep. Value. Excellent. All right. Appreciate it. Last call. Any questions? Going once. Going twice. Hopefully I'll see what, 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 yeah, what half, man, what half marathon are you running? I'll be in Miami, January 28th. Sweet. Miami half, January 28th. And then I'm doing Atlanta in February. Uh, I'm looking for another challenge to help me compete. Um, it probably won't be running because I hate running. Uh, it'll probably be bodybuilding. So after I finish running, if I'm at the gym, I'll take my shirt off and I'm drenching sweat. And I noticed that my man boobs are gone. I'm still working on the side pieces, but I'm noticing, Damon, that I got to start getting my chest out like it used to be when I was in my 20s. So I might start just lifting. Um, I know Simone has an aunt that body builds. So I might start lifting and get right. If I lift and start getting right, Levi, it's over. Game, game over. I'm walking. I told my wife walking outside every day with no shirt on. We put, we doing videos with no shirt and and. We doing it like it's going to be the whole thing. What you got, Marcus? You said choose an area and then transform. Can you give me an example of what that is? What do you mean by transform? So if I'm weak in its area, I become Captain America. I become the Incredible Hawk. No, before you can become Captain America, you first have to identify why you're weak in that area. And you just begin to work on strengthening it. Like, let's say the goal is to get to a five or 100 pounds that you can bench. Let's just say you can't just be like, all right, let me practice lifting 100 pounds. Now, let me make let me see if I can get 25 pounds five times. And if I can get 25 pounds five times, 
maybe I can go up to 35 five times or do 25 10 times. I have to build up this. This is, I'm going to say two things. The first thing is for my men, the testicular fortitude in those areas, meaning, and y'all men know what I'm talking about, the testicular fortitude. Then the second thing that I have to build up is the mental strength. You're not going to be able to just, and Marcus, I, we talk, I know, I know who you are. You want to go in and go from Marcus to the Incredible Hulk. I need you to go from Marcus to Marcus 2.0 to Marcus 3.0 before you can even think about Marcus 5.0. So give yourself grace to grow in, in, in every season. And if you can accomplish growing in an area, one area per month or per quarter, then that leaves you room to grow in other areas where you are not strong. And there are other areas. We just identified four. Make sense? The key thing is find somebody that's going to cuss you out when you need to get cussed. Or keep it, let me say it a better way. Get you an OG that can keep it 100 with you. If all hearts and minds are clear, uh, Tony drops them. If anybody needs it again, it's join the G Circle um, or the 90 Day Accelerator. Carm Carmelita, how you doing? City in March for the Memorial Marathon. I'm Mar doing fine, thank you. <laughs> Did you say a marathon in March? I ain't doing that. Yeah, you can do the half marathon. They've got a half marathon as well. It's cold in Oklahoma in March, ain't it? It could be. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe April. I'll see by April. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those months. I can't remember. You know, it was when um our building got bombed. Oh. And uh, so they have a marathon every year for that. So it might be April, actually. I think that bombing was in April. Okay. Listen, I appreciate you guys for coming out. Uh, we had a lot of people register and a great amount of you guys came out. Um, thinking about doing this monthly, quarterly. Uh, more importantly, what I don't want to do is if we do a monthly and we jump on next month and it's the same people, we can't be talking about the same thing. I ain't doing that. We tricking time off. So commit to yourself to get better every day. Y'all have a great grind day. We'll talk soon.